Do you enjoy working with your hands, being outdoors? Well, becoming an electrician in 2021 might be for you. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of becoming an electrician, including salary, job market, and more. But first, what is an electrician and what do they do? Almost every single building has electricity, and electricians are the professionals that ensure that these buildings are updated, maintained, and repaired. Residential buildings, commercial buildings, schools, and hospitals all need electricity. Electricians install, maintain, and repair electrical wiring, equipment, and fixtures. Their work can also involve reading blueprints, which include technical diagrams of electrical systems, and they have to be experts in different kinds of power tools and hand tools. Many electricians can work alone, but sometimes they work on a team. One of the advantages of trying to become an electrician is the barrier to entry is pretty low. It doesn't require a four-year degree. In fact, according to the Occupational Information Network, about 8% of employed electricians actually haven't quite finished high school just yet. About 19% have a high school diploma, and about 59% of employed electricians have a high school diploma and a certificate. So it doesn't require too much time or money to become an electrician. But one thing to keep in mind is this is pretty dangerous work. Electricians die every now and then. So this happened recently in Wichita, Kansas. A man was electrocuted on a roof of a building in Old Town. It happened on Tuesday around noon. There was two technicians. I think one was HVAC, the other was an electrician. They didn't go into too many details about how this particular man died, but he was on a team working on a roof in Kansas, in Wichita, Kansas, and he was electrocuted and they could not revive him. Another thing to keep in mind is this is a pretty physically demanding job. Electricians tend to be on their feet a lot. They can be in small, tight spaces. And some electricians even report having carpal tunnel just because they're doing some very repetitive motions throughout the day for potentially years. So next up, let's talk about the compensation of electricians all across the United States. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in the year 2020, the average base pay, not including overtime, for electricians was $61,550. This is higher than auto mechanics, this is higher than solar panel installers, and it is higher than HVAC techs. And it's, it's, a very, it's only a couple hundred dollars higher than plumbers. But it is less than aircraft mechanics, and it's less than elevator mechanics. Elevator mechanics can make a lot of money, and they're pretty much the highest paid trade. Electricians have seen pretty substantial wage growth over the years. In the year 2000, the average base salary for 40 hour week was $42,210, and this grew to $61,550 in 2020. This gives us a wage growth of about $20,000 over about two decades. From the year 2000 to the year 2020, the average yearly wage growth was around $920. And since 2015, if you just look at that wage growth, 2015 to 2020, it's about $1,000 per year. So actually, it's great news for electricians. Their wages have been growing a little bit more quickly in recent years. If you were to take this average yearly wage growth number, by the year 2024, the average base salary for 40-hour week would be around $65,000, and this would rise to about $71,000 in the year 2030. Another thing to keep in mind, in the United States, pay really depends on which state or which metro area the electrician is employed in. It also depends on whether they're in a union or not. There's a lot of factors that go into the compensation of electricians. But just looking at geography, there are certain states that tend to pay electricians a lot more than others. Actually, Illinois, the state of Illinois, tends to pay electricians the greatest wage, where the average base salary for 40-hour week is around $82,000. This is followed by the states of New York, Hawaii, D.C., and Oregon. Pretty much all the dark blue colored states in this map tend to pay electricians more than the lighter blue colored states in this map. But average base pay doesn't really give electricians justice. A lot of electricians are entitled to overtime. Certain occupations have access to paid overtime and others do not. Electricians do have access to paid overtime, whereas say teachers do not. And also in certain states like California, there's a mandate in California that after a certain amount of time, people have to be, be given double time, not just time and a half, but double time. So electricians in certain states and working in certain companies, they can make double time and their pay can really 
explode. Another way electricians can make a lot more money than this is to become a general contractor. This requires a couple more licenses and this really depends on the state. But at that point, you are your own business owner. You might be hiring other electricians and you're probably also bidding on work. So if you're interested in this as an occupation, the two ways to really boost your income is through overtime, especially in specific states like California and attempting to become a contractor. The next question is, what is the job market like for electricians? Is it becoming more and more competitive? Is it challenging to find a job? The first thing to understand is the electrician workforce is massive. According to the government, there were 656,510 employed electricians all over the United States. This is more than the number of auto mechanics, aircraft mechanics, HVAC techs, plumbers. So there is a lot of employed electricians. And just like construction managers and other occupations that are related to the housing industry, electricians got a little bit hurt during the Great Recession. According to the government, in the year 2000, there were 640,000 employed electricians. By 2008, there was about 633,000, slightly less. And then the number of employed tanked. So by the year 2010, there was about 514,000 employed, over 120,000 less electricians were employed in 2010 than 2008. So recessions definitely can hurt the employment prospects of electricians. Since then, the number of employed has really bounced back. By 2020, there was about 656,000 employed electricians. And the small dip you see there is mostly because of the pandemic, which is still going on right now. But in my opinion, given the affordable housing crisis in the United States, the fact that every single year there's more and more housing starts, there could definitely be a lot of potential in the future for more and more electricians to enter the workforce. The government is also a little bullish. They're estimating an 8% growth in the number of employed electricians from 2020 to 2030. And if you're going to compare this forecast to different trades, it looks really good. If you're trying to determine which trade you want to go into, I think electricians have a pretty good forecast. For example, aircraft mechanics are expected at around 5%. The government is expecting a 4% drop in the number of auto mechanics. Elevator mechanics, about 7% growth. HVAC tech, 4 Plumbers, 4 And the government is actually expecting a 51% growth in the number of solar panel installers over the next 10 years. So a lot of economists working for the government are projecting pretty good job growth for electricians going forward. But what I usually like to do is I really like to get a real-time estimate on the demand for people in different occupations. I use three different job boards, Indeed, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn. And I just look at the number of job postings around the country. On Glassdoor.com, when I searched for electrician in the United States, it gave me about 16,000 job postings. Meanwhile, on Indeed.com, there was 14,886 job postings. And finally, on LinkedIn, about 21,000 job postings. So based off the number of job postings, it does look pretty competitive. This might not be the best metric because some companies might just have relationships with trade schools and people graduate trade schools and immediately go and work for this ABC company. So maybe this isn't the best metric, but based off the number of job postings, on these three different job platforms, there isn't as much demand for electricians as some of the other trades. So one thing that is really popular when trying to choose a career is figuring out your Myers-Briggs personality type and comparing that type to people in different occupations. So according to the Myers-Briggs company, the most likely type to become an electrician is the ESTP, also known as the persuader. This is followed by the ESTJ, the director, the ISTP, the crafter, and then the fourth is the inspector, the ISTJ. Notice that all four of these types prefer sensing over intuition, meaning they're in the moment. They also prefer thinking over feeling. So I hope this helps. As you can see, there's some pros and cons to becoming an electrician in 2021. Definitely don't underestimate it. It's a dangerous occupation. It can be also very labor intensive. Electricians do have pretty good income potential, especially if they work overtime or are on a path to become a contractor. And the government is projecting pretty good job growth over the next 10 years. If you enjoyed this video, check out my, some of my other videos on different trades. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.